Hey everyone, it's Sarah the Redneck by Focal Stitcher. Welcome to my floss tube, a channel all about cross stitch and my love of the fiber art. Today is Thursday, February 8th, and this is episode number nine. If you're new, welcome. I'm genuinely happy to have you here with me. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. I always love having you come spend um, some time with me when I film and publish my floss tube. So um, I do have a special guest on today's episode. I... Um, have someone in my house who finished her first piece ever and she asked me if she could be featured on one of my floss tube videos and I talked to my husband about it and we both thought you know this is okay it's just kind of a one-time thing it's not going to be become a, a regular thing so um stick around to the end. Um, please leave some comments for her. I know she will totally appreciate it. She's so excited to share things with the cross stitch community and my viewers. So there is that. Um, anyway, January came and went, I stitched a lot of stitching and I, um, worked on a lot of whips. I don't have numbers. I stopped trying to keep count. Um, there were some days where I would work on two or three different whips at a time, or not at a time, but I would work on two or three different whips. And if I didn't write things down, then I just lost track. And it was kind of a, mm, neat, mm, yeah, that's what it is. So anyway, um, what did I work on since I last filmed? I pulled out Coming to America. This is the 400 year commemoration of the passage of the Mayflower, um, Brenda Gervais released it in 2020 as a box and it was um, a limited edition and um, I managed to get one of the boxes off of somebody in Stash Unload. So here's where I am right now. This is on a 40 count piece of Vintage Country Mocha and I'm using all of the called for flosses that came with the kit. Um, and I know that Brenda re-released both of the patterns that came in the box because of popular demand. So um, I'm just happy that I manage to get my hands on a copy. So here it is. I love it so much. Stitching one over two. And that's that. So, oh, here is Coming to America. I do have some relatives on both sides, my mother and my father's side, that came over on the Mayflower. So I need to um, find out who it is and I will stitch their names in a different color to signify that they are family. So there's that. I also worked on Winter Rose Manor from Brenda Gervais. Um, here's where I was before. I'm still working on that house, trying to get the windows and door done so that filling in is a lot easier. And here's where I am now. And I'm really happy with how this is looking. Um, once you get the other parts of the house put in, it doesn't look so daunting. I mean, just imagine doing all of this one color. I, and I know it's not. I know that I've got windows and doors to break everything up. Oh, my camera's shaking. It's the road construction. It's awesome. So anyway, um, this is where I've gotten on Winter Rose Manor. I'm going to continue to work on the windows in that door um, just so that when it comes time to fill it in, I can sit down and not think about it and get it done. So there's that. This is a 36 count piece of fabric and I can't remember if it's Brenda's Blue, Brenda's Brew or Barb's Blend. It's alliterative, um, but yeah, that's the fabric that I used. So um, next up, I worked on Miss Bingley's Library, which is another house. Um, this time around, I managed to finish all of the windows in the door. I got the um, gray stripe put in across the house and here is where I am now. Um, I've started filling in the white and I'll tell you filling it in is so quick. I um, for one of my challenge or yeah for one of my challenge prompts I needed to do 300 stitches on something related to reading or literature so of course I pulled this out and I can honestly say that doing full crosses, um, this is one over two, I was able to get 300 stitches in, um, in probably about an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and a half. It just goes so, so dang quickly. So this house I feel like is gonna fly by now that I'm at that fill in moment. So there's that. And then also to go along with more Plum Street samplers, 
I'm, I'm in my Plum Street sampler era, I've decided. I had to go pick up something for a friend yesterday at Shepherd's Bush, and I was talking to Rita, one of the ladies who works there, and I said, oh, I just wanna stitch every single Plum Street. And she's like, me too. Oh, they're so, they're so awesome. So I've got Miss Bingley, and then here is a new constellation from Plum Street. And here's where I am now. I'm super excited with the amount of quote that I've got. There's one more line above the um, stripes section. So there's five lines. And um, I got Betsy Ross's done, Betsy Ross's little section right here done at, in this top section. So there's where I am. And then I had posted on Instagram a couple of weeks ago saying, you know, you look at something so close and you need to hold it away so that you get a better idea of what it looks like. Cause you know, you, you're focused on one little section and that's all you see. But then when you pull it out of the Q snaps and you do this and you see how just, oh, beautiful this is. Let me get something to back this up. That's just so beautiful. I love it so much. I'm super happy with how this is turning out. So um, I do plan on working on the Heritage Sampler and Equality Sampler and the New World Sampler. Those are all waiting in the wings and can't wait to get to work on those as well. And then my other Plum Street sampler that I worked on for this week, of course, is Live on Little. This is the focus piece that I'm really putting a lot of stitches into this year. So um, here's where I was before. I am still working on that front little portion of the house. And here's where I got to now. Oh, yep, I'm using, <laughs> there we go. Now you can't see through it. So there is the front of the house. I love it so much. This seems like it would be daunting because the house is so much bigger compared to Miss Bingley's library and even Winter Rose Manor, especially with all of those color changes in the bricks, but I'm loving it oh, so much. This is so fun. So, so much fun. And this is also one of my biggest whips. I think the dimensions are like 307 by two. It's, it's big. 300 something by 200 something. So here's where I am now. I'm going to keep working on this. So I don't think it's going to come out of the Q snaps anytime soon. Um, maybe to let it breathe and um, it'll go right back in. So there is live on little. Then I worked on Stephen King house and I don't have a before picture. I looked for one and I don't know what happened. So here's where I got on Stephen King house. This is the um, picture this plus shale and it is a 32 count. So yeah, I'm super excited with that. This little section right here um, that I started working on, this is where Carrie's room is and some of the blood splatter that goes with that. So Stephen King house, picture this plus shale, love it. Okay, the house started shaking because of the road construction and I still have some planes flying overhead. So I'm, there it is. <laughs> Did I tell you why planes flying overhead kind of bothers me? Um, when I was in ninth grade, I was in an honors English class and we had to do Romeo and Juliet. Um, we had to do a whole act from Romeo and Juliet and we got an F because a plane flew overhead in one of the outdoor scenes and it took away all of the realism from um, the play and my teacher yeah, gave us all an F because of that. So I have issues with interference like planes. <laughs> Anyway, next up, I worked on Stitchy Witchy Bell Pull from Stitchy Pros. This is on a 40 count piece of spicy mustard from Fiber on a Whim. Here's where I was the last time and here's where I am now. I love this design so much. This is a fabulous piece of fabric and the colors and the design, I'm, I'm excited to watch this unfold in front of my eyes. So good. I love it so much. This came fully kitted and I got it from um, Top Knot Stitcher. Did I already say that? I got it from Abby, Top Knot Stitcher. Um, this is kind of how big it's going to be when it's done. But, oh, it's so good. I have some really good whips right now. I hope everyone feels that way, that there isn't anything that 
anyone's just kind of uh, working on so that they can say that they're getting it done. Yeah. So, um, and then I had mentioned in maybe my last one, maybe the one before, that I had to frog a pretty significant section of Salem Sisters Apothecary. And I thought, you know what? I want to be transparent just about my kind of stitching and what I do. And so I thought, I shouldn't be ashamed of what I'm frogging because that is my own decision. People's decisions to frog are their own. And you're going to find that in any kind of um, needle crafting. Um, yeah, because you frog in knitting and you frog in crocheting. I don't know if it's a different term, but it's the same thing. You you rip out stitches when you're sewing. And um, if if nobody frogged, then there wouldn't be any seam rippers. So I thought, I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm, I, yeah, so here we are. This is what I frogged. It's a lot. I still need to pull out finest and the rest of this bird but I had the A and then everything down in here, it was off. Um, it was closer to the des to the center of the design by one stitch. And while that doesn't bother a lot of people, it bothers me. Um, that's all I could focus on was this. And so I thought it's better to pull it out and get it right and know that everything is done correctly and being able to enjoy the piece without seeing the imperfection. You know what I mean? So there it is and I even had put aside my little pile of frog droppings thread pieces whatever you want to call it but then they were kind of starting to dissipate and get on all of my other fabrics and everything so I thought no I'll just throw it in my ort jar but yeah I I thought that was kind of silly anyway um I'll pick up Salem Sisters Apothecary and keep working on it um this is just one skein of 310 that I've been using and this is on Spiced Honey from Color and Cotton I love this fabric so much it's so pretty so there's that um and then last up I pulled out Princess Eliana from Mirabilia here's where I was before and then here's where I am now I did this for um, the princess birthday sal that Allison at the moment and cross stitch the globe Stephanie are doing for Allison's birthday. She is tackling one of the Thomas Kincaid, um, cross stitch kits. And I have to say their last episode, all about the cost, the most expensive cross stitch patterns on eBay. Um, well, the, the most expensive cross stitch patterns, according to eBay, hilarious as a mirabilia stitcher i've done many many mirrors as you are aware of and i'm doing even more i know which ones are the most expensive and i called every single one of them tiger lily was at the top lady of the flag was number three and yeah just everything on there so here's my eliana i'm loving her so much um the colors in this nora just knocked it out of the park with using that new um the new set of 35 um colors that dmc came out with at this time um so that's her in her entirety and then here's where i stitched um i just worked on this little orange panel right here on her dress and gosh talk about chaos and mayhem can you tell what this is? I mean, if you know what it is, yeah, you can tell. But right now, this just looks like a bunch of chaos. <laughs> but, oh, she's going to be so gorgeous when she's done. So, there it is for my stitching. Um, hang on one sec. I will tack on the little clip that we filmed last night right here. Hi everyone, I am Hannah and today I am going to show you my first ever FFO finished project. It is a dimensions kit. It's Paper Mario, as you can see. I used all of the supplies kitted in there. It's a 14 count Ada and my mom helped me. FFO and thread the needle. 
I am so proud of her for finishing that. Um, she felt so accomplished when she got this done. Um, just a little backstory about that kiddo of mine. Um, she has some pretty significant eye issues and um, threading the needle was something that I really wanted her to work on, but with the way her vision has developed over her lifetime, um, she's lucky that she's got sight in both of her eyes. Um, you can tell that she's got a pretty thick um, prescription just based off of what you saw um, from that little clip but um, she's had multiple eye surgeries and I'm lucky that um, she is where she is as far as um, her sight development. So I thought what better way to work her eye muscles even more by um, focusing on stitching. So I did thread her needles for her, but she this is all her 100% and I'm super proud of her. I did show her how to finish this on the back. I thought I would, you know, um, stitch a little piece of felt over it but it's that's eh, fine it's small enough that it's not really going to matter so there is her little paper mario and she's got a cat pattern that she has right over here waiting to be started when she saw that cat pattern she hadn't finished this yet and she asked me well can i get that and i said well you're not going to start it until you can show me that you can finish paper mario and she said to me well, why do I have to finish one when you don't finish any of the projects you have going? And I was like, we are not having that discussion, young lady. <laughs> oh, I, I love her so much. So anyway, thank you for leaving some kind words for her. I know that it will truly, truly make her day. So that being said, um, have a great day stitching and I will talk to you later.